Welcome, intrepid viewers, welcome. Trendsetters of all types, glad you found the channel. Well, I've got two words for anyone interested in the future of democracy in America, and that is Mitch McConnell. So he came out, was it yesterday or the day before, and he said, we in the Senate will not impeach Donald Trump under any circumstances. He actually said it. Now we all knew it, of course they wouldn't. But you're not supposed to say it, Mitch. You're supposed to look at the evidence and then decide there wasn't enough to impeach. You're not supposed to announce up front that you won't do it. So they don't care. He's saying, we don't care what crimes he's committed. We don't care that he's destroyed the Western Alliance um, with all the allies that have been cultivated over the last 70 years, leaving Russia and China, the entire geopolitical space. They don't care. They don't care even if he decimates the very pillars of the Republic. We don't care, as long as we make money. The hypocrisy is mind-bending. They have no morals at all. They have no flaw. There is no bottom. There are no depths they will not go to. And then they have the hide to run on ethics and morals. Hypocrisy, viewers. This is what this global lesson is about. This is one of the, the angles that we all have to come to grips with. This hypocrisy of the conservatives, you know. And their biggest fear, of course, is always being caught in a motel you know, with a dead girl or a live boy. Don't know which is worse for the, you know, heartland. Endless hypocrisy, always putting down the marginalised. They're just truly disgusting people. But this is a number of you have requested this, so it's having a look at whether Bolton, he with the 70s porn star moustache, could possibly start an accidental war. Goodness. Best have a look. Trump always said no war, no war, but nothing, nothing is viable that comes out further than his tonsils. I mean, really. So I'm going to do Bolton on the left, my left, <laughs> Trump on the right, and what's connecting them? So let's have a look. I'm using the Toff deck. Oops, what fell out? Oof. Swiftness, we'll use that as their signifier. The equivalent of the Eight of Wands. Things are happening quickly. Things are happening quickly. Bolton and Trump. So, just giving you a quick look at their signifier. That's the one in the usual decks with all those spear-like wands. But in this, it's all the wands heading to the centre, gathering momentum into the centre. So, we have Bolton. Oh, big cards, big cards. Oh, Trump. <laughs> and what joins them? Okay. All right, and I'll do an, a further outcome face down. This is very strange. It is very weird, I have to say, what's flashing through my head with this. Okay. So things are happening quickly. Bolton, he's the one with the pharaoh complex in relation to, he's the one who actually goes around the world and has gone around the world for the last 40 years. The weird thing about Bolton, sorry, digression already, viewers, you don't get the feeling that he's the best and the brightest and so because he's too... Um, ideological, he's too hardline, he's too too blind to understand the nuances of world power plays. 
he's got the same fixation he had in 1978 and he hasn't moved on. This is his pharaoh complex. So he's, so, but now he's got this immense power. This is a major arcana card, very significant card and very powerful. He then has another major arcana card, the fool. Now, I'm not going to explain the many nuanced layered meanings of the fool. I don't have to, because this is coming from the baseline here. This is this powerful man, power beyond what he can actually handle, embarking on a classically foolish endeavour. He's a master manip No, that's wrong. He's a manipulator. I don't see him as a master of anything. He is not a gifted bureaucrat. He's not an ultra clever spy. He's not a great strategist. He's not a huge philosophical thinker. He, he doesn't exhibit any of that. He is a boring one trick pony. This is the card of the manipulator, but it's also the card of change. And I don't know who is manipulating. Iran's not fooled by him. The Pentagon certainly wouldn't be fooled by him. They've heard it all before out of his dreary lips for decades. And they know it's a fool's errand. The powers that be already know. What do they share? They share two things. They share disappointment, which is interesting. This is, uh, when we get to Trump's, you might see why. I'm pleased to see that, not just because I'm a mean-spirited hag on the other side of the world. It's not that, but if they want war, let's hope they're disappointed, is how I see that card. But... There is also further manipulation behind the scenes. We're not out of danger yet. I'm saying we, because what America does, does impact on the world. And it's not just wild turkey and Levi jeans. There's a very serious issues at stake, not the least of which is um, these crippling sanctions on the Iranian people. Oligarchs' lifestyles aren't affected, whether we put sanctions, us, you, anyone on Iran and Russia, it's ordinary people who suffer. Plus, by this posturing, this foolish posturing of Bolton, it's the opposite of forcing regime change. People will back their own leaders because they're being attacked by the West. It is the most stupid policy. Not new. It was like that. This is... Iran Contra revisited, you know, this it literally, literally, yeah, it's so stupid, I can't even describe it. But he's going to keep going. But I feel he may well be thwarted because Trump gets in succession the death card. Now, Madurosmo, it really means. Um, actual death, but the end of one way of doing things completely. So it's it's followed in Trump's line with the card of hasty, ill thought out revenge. This is saying not a smart adventure. The Teflon Don then gets the Six of Cups, and so. He manages to survive this near miss. By the way, I see it as a near miss rather than an actual thing. Um, there could be some military encounters, but not a full-scale war, because you think the West would be getting the message now. We've rushed off to every war with America, and I can't remember any that have been won in my lifetime. So I, I think... If they think the American public will just rally behind Trump because there's a war on, the energy has changed. I don't think that's a winning formula anymore. But I have to be fair in terms of interpreting the cards. Trump gets out of that too. It's like 
it was, oh, well, you know, he nearly got in a war, but we pulled him out. That was lucky. Final outcome, yes, adjustment. Cool heads will prevail at the Pentagon. There's a lot going on in this reading. I would not be surprised if there isn't, you know, an incident or two. I don't want to be dramatic about it. I think there'll be something or a series of smallish things, but I'm not seeing America going to war with Iran as an actual thing. So I'm pleased to report that to the viewers. Also, thank you for the viewer who pointed out, <laughs> they went back and looked at my Deutsche Bank reading on Jared Kushner and Deutsche Bank from a year ago. And apparently, I can't remember, I said all the things that are coming out now about this case. And that was a year before the New York Times. <laughs> so thank you, viewer. Because a lot of these, I'm sure other readers will agree, um, you do these readings and often you can't remember at all. And other times you'll remember some aspect for years and years, but generally, particularly when you're reading as often as, as we do, the main guys that you all follow, you know. Um, yeah, you read and move on because you're also part of what's happening. You've got to digest the next tsunami of craziness that's going through. All right then, now, if you... Um, Oh, I will also um, remind you about past life readings. You can get a general reading or you can get a general and a past life reading combined. I just want to say a little bit about that because I think some people are interested in the idea of a past life re reading but are a bit nervous. I think it's because people think it's a past life regression because that is, you know, something that's done. People practice that you know, taking you back to a past life and you experience it again and move forward. I don't do that. That's not my skill base. Don't want to go there. No, 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 no. When I do a past life reading, um, you're still just you and we are talking about what is coming up in the cards and with the other tools I use. And someone said it's much more like going to the movies. <laughs> so I don't want you to be intimidated by past life and think you're you know, um, going to experience some dreadful torment or something. No, it's not like that. It's just looking at the dynamics of situations. So if you didn't watch the past life I did with Kirsten Langston, you can pull it up on her channel, Third Eye Champagne, and she edited that because it was very, very, very long, but you'll get an idea of what it's about. My email's on every video. So if you feel compelled to have a reading on anything at all, get in touch. I then send you notes. There are a few things I don't read on, but you will see those in the notes. Other than that, let's get together. See you soon. Bye for now.